What you're watching here is a submarine called the DSV Limiting Factor, and it's diving down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. This is the deepest part of the ocean, and this sub set a record at a dive depth of 35,849 feet. With the recent disaster of the Titan sub, we often think of a lot of the ocean as off limits. However, with the right technology and advancements, we can reach the deepest parts of our planet. Now this all begs the question, how deep deep can a submarine actually go? What happens when it encounters an insane amount of pressure at the bottom? And will commercial ocean travel ever be a thing again? Today, we're going to be answering all of these questions. If I were to ask you what the average depth of the ocean is, a lot of you would probably say a few hundred or maybe a few thousand feet. But in reality, it's 12,100 feet. Now this might be hard to believe because we spend all of our time in the 2% of the ocean where it's shallow. Free diving, swimming, and scuba diving are all great ways to explore the underwater world. But you cover such a small fragment of the whole picture. This is why submarines are used by scientists. However, this all comes with great risk. Traditional submarines, those used for tourism and limited exploration, have a depth limit between 1,000 and 3,500 feet. But of course, we do have submarines that can go deeper. Most military subs can dive anywhere between 2,000 and 4,500 feet. To put that into perspective, that's not even half of the depth of the Titanic. So let's go back to the Titan sub. If military submarines are limited to around 4,500 feet, why would we make a tourism-based sub? to go twice as deep. Now we'll dive into that and the effects of implosion in a little bit. But let's continue with how deep submarines can actually go. The Titan had a max depth of 13,000 feet before definite implosion. And beyond that, there have only been a handful of man-operated subs that can go deeper than that. Back in 1960, believe it or not, the Challenger Deep was the first sub to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench at over 35,000 feet. But since then, only 20 20 trips to the bottom have been made, with two being unsuccessful. And believe it or not, one of the trips included director James Cameron. But moving on, at this depth, the pressure is unfathomable. Down here, the pressure is around 15,750 pounds per square inch. That's over 1,070 times greater than that at the surface. And the equivalent of having the weight of three Ford F-150 trucks pressing down on every square inch of your body. It's taken an insane amount amount of advancement to go to this depth. So now that we've established that submarines can go to the deepest parts of Earth, you have to remember that they do have limits. So now let's go over what implosion is and how quickly it actually happens. We'll start by using the Titan sub disaster for example. The max depth rating of the sub was said to be 13,000 feet. The Titanic, which was its destination, sits at around 12,600 feet. It was kind of a silly idea to bring a sub down this close to its depth depth limit. And the way it was built set it up for disaster. Subs that are meant to go this deep are massive and bigger than you've probably ever thought. Yet the Titan was small in size, which is one of its key selling points. Now implosion itself is when so much pressure is exhibited that the object collapses inward, the opposite of an explosion. It's believed the Titan sub imploded at around 11,000 feet. At this depth, the pressure is roughly 5,000 pounds per square inch, the equivalent of one Ford F-150 pressing down on every square inch of your body. Implosions are either caused by a leak or going past the depth limit, and the Titan had a small leak. With the pressure so high, the implosion lasted an estimated one millisecond. So how fast would an implosion be in the Mariana Trench? With the pressure three times greater than at the Titanic, it would precisely be about three times as fast. Now this actually has happened before to unmanned subs in the trench. It happens so fast you can't recognize it until after the fact. Deep ocean exploration is crazy dangerous. As a fact, even more dangerous than exploring in deep space. Hopefully, we never have anything like the Titan happen again. But it goes to show how dangerous the deep ocean actually is. We've only explored and seen 5% of the ocean, but part of that is because it's so difficult to explore. These machines are a marvel of engineering, and it'll be interesting to see how much more we can explore in the future. And if we're able to save subs from implosion, as well.